a very good afternoon to one all present there this is revathi ravishankar uh, from chennai india uh, as daniel said i am a uh, microbiologist a bioinformatician bio, bio artist a max and science educator and also an independent researcher i have uh, done my research in fungi so uh, this is my uh, first uh, bio art with respect to bacteriophage bacteriophage is nothing but the virus which infects and kills bacteria so this is the basic structure of bacteriophage which i have uh, done modification by adding designs textures and styles to the uh, basic structure so this is the uh, bacteriophage uh, which i have modified and uh, done some styles with the design so this is the second slide of chlamydomonas this is a algae uh, this is a unicellular algae so this is the basic structure from which i have uh, derived my own uh, art art form and uh, i have uh, included indian rangoli style in this so you can see the modified structure here so vibrio species here comes the uh, queen of bacteria uh, seems to be the most important species uh, when compared to the other bacterial one it's a gram negative bacteria it has uh, it's yeah it's highly infectious uh, there are so many species vibrio fumigators vibrio uh, cholera so which is responsible for cholera and uh, when compared to the other bacteria it has a special uh, endotoxin that is cholerogens which makes it uh, highly infectious and uh, when um, there is some specific reason why i have drawn this vibrio here uh, vibrio uh, exhibits dark pink motility that's a special characteristic which you cannot see in other bacteria so you can view this case only under dark field microscope so because of this it uh, it's a really a special organism when compared to the other gram negative bacteria uh, so and it, uh, it's very uh, hard to grow this organism uh, but you can uh, see this or visualize this uh, to uh, find the uh, if the person comes with the symptoms to identify whether the person has been infected by vibrio species we have to go for motility test that's to, that to the darting motility exhibited by this vibrio under dark field microscope so because of this special characteristic feature i have uh, taken vibrio uh, to represent bacteria so coming to the uh, cryptococcus neoformans uh, a mold that is the fungi uh, cryptococcus neoformans is also an uh, infectious uh, fungi it has the ability to cause cryptococcal meningitis so inflammation in meningitis means inflammation in brain and spinal cord so this mold is different from the other uh, mold because uh, this mold uh, actually results uh, resides in the pigeons dropping so it has it takes 6 hours uh, for the uh, for this mold to uh, transform uh, its structure or may get into double and um, it is really infectious and uh, so uh this organism looks really beautiful when you view it under microscope and uh, uh, the same the specimen for uh, for which you uh, collect uh, with respect to identify the cryptococcus uh, uh, infections is that is the uh, cerebral spinal fluid and uh, and if you have to detect the infections caused by the cryptococcus as early as possible because it's highly infectious and if you don't Uh, identify within two uh, one to two days. It's very difficult to save the save the person. Uh, and uh, I love the structure of this organism uh, because I have a real uh, passion or uh, love towards fungi. So uh, I have seen this organism under microscopes. And when uh, but but one uh, once you you view this organism under microscope, you will not believe that this organism is such, uh, such an infectious one, which has the ability to even to kill the human beings. so coming to the next uh, bacteria so neisseria gonorrhea so this organism is a special one uh, why i have uh, drew uh, this time uh, last year also i have submitted in the uh, uh, participated and presented in the bio community summit this year i have chosen some special organisms which has some specific features when we compare to the other organism neisseria gonorrhea first thing this is a gram negative bacteria and uh, it's a uh, second one it's a gram negative cocci uh, and uh, it is the organism which is responsible for uh, meningitis and uh, this the special feature of this organism is that it uh, actually exists in it's a diplococci that is it actually exists only in pairs 
so you can see the basic structure and um, so much of uh, hair like pili uh, protrusions you can see from the outside surface of the bacteria and uh, so this year i have uh, chosen some different organisms which has very specific features when we compare with normal bacteria fungi virus or algae with their specific uh, within these specific groups and um, so these organisms uh, uh, some um, here i have drawn uh, the uh, made the bio of some specific organisms like cryptococcus vibrio neisseria yeah they are highly infectious but when you view it under a microscope their structure is really beautiful and you will develop a love towards these organisms and uh, the, the the stainings for these organisms also is, is really special and they have some specific features with them which makes them a unique one when compared to the other organisms so here comes the yeast uh, the saccharomyces cerevisiae which is also called as the baker's yeast this is the basic structure from which we have uh, modified and made a bio art for this saccharomyces cerevisiae and as i mentioned it's a unicellular organism a yeast which is usually used in bakeries uh, to prepare the bread uh, cake items which gives the uh, it's it acts as a leavening agent that is it gives softness to the uh, bakery items and um, this organism is also responsible for the uh, uh, alcohol fermentation so this organism is really uh, beautiful and uh, it's uh, it's really a visual treat to watch this organism when it uh, goes for the budding stage so so for this specific picture i have uh, drawn this saccharomyces cerevisiae so now comes the turning point of the uh, bio art so uh, as i um, mentioned in the form i request you all to take a paper and pen so that it will be uh, easy for you to answer my questions so are you all ready with the paper and pen so may i uh, start with the questions so uh, this i think these questions will be interesting and it will be uh, good to you which will uh, provoke you or uh, inculcate uh, the uh, knowledge the idea of getting uh, more knowledge or more information about microorganisms so i have mixed uh, taken the questions uh, by mixing all the departments that is uh, fungi bacteria virus and algae so so let me start with the first question so what is the selective media used for the identification of pseudomonas species any idea so uh, and they smell it, kind of strange <laughs> but that's not in media <laughs> sorry I know they smell different on certain on solid agar but I don't think that's a selective media. Uh, so tunas is a, a very beautiful organism which gives green colored colonies and the selective media used for the identification of pseudomonas is kings bee medium. So that's a special medium from which we can uh, um, cultivate pseudomonas. So the second question going to the second question who is called as the father of microbiology? Any guesses? so the answer is anton van leeuwenhoek so he is called as the father of microbiology he is the first person who um, brought microscope and visualized bacteria under microscope so third question so what is the special motility feature of vibrio cholera if you are uh, listening my presentation definitely you will get the answer for this question any guesses i mentioned uh, during my presentation it is darting motility so that's a special characteristic feature of this vibrio which you can uh, visualize only under dark field microscope and the fourth question which microorganism lacks cell wall the answer is mycoplasma that's the uh, organism which doesn't have cell wall and uh, if you put any antibiotic which has the ability to rupture or damage the cell wall that doesn't work on mycoplasma infections and uh, third question what is the action of the antibiotic penicillin on bacteria so uh, penicillin uh, it's produced by penicillium trisogenum and penicillium notatum it uh, acts on bacteria and ruptures the beta lactam ring which is present in the cell wall that's the special feature of this antibiotic so uh, when you use this antibiotic to treat the bacterial infections 
this organism causes damage to the cell wall and leads to the death of bacteria so sixth question so which virus is responsible for both common warts as well as cervical cancer any guess come on why so silence in the chat people are writing in the chat <laughs> Yeah, they are giving the answers in chat. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, papilloma virus. Yeah, it's correct. It's human papilloma virus. Excellent. Super. So, seventh question. So, the study of algae is called as? Algology. Algology. Uh, thank you. At least... Uh, you people turned up to answer the questions. So eighth one, which bacteria is responsible for nitrogen fixation in soil? So if you have heard about soil microbiology, definitely would be aware of this organism. Rhizobium species. So that's the, uh, it lives in a, uh, it lives in the legumes of uh, plants. It lives in symbiosis relationship. It gives mutual, uh, the, uh, it gets the location, it gets the place to survive rhizobium bacteria. In order, uh, in replacement, it fix the nitrogen to the uh, to enhance the growth of the plant. So ninth one, which fungi is called as dairy mold? Uh, the answer is Geotrichum candidum. So that's the uh, mold which is commonly called as dairy mold and uh, uh, it, uh, this mold uh, 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 causes uh, more infections in uh, dairy products. And uh, last question, which fungi produces black colored colonies on potato dystrophs agar? Uh, yeah, Pablo gave the correct answer. Answer is Aspergillus niger. Super. And the last slide. So I have given the uh, pictures of the organism in the uh, with the medias. So any guesses? Anyone uh, have any idea by identifying the organism from the uh, color of the colonies given in the petri plate? So let me give you one clue uh, with, uh, for all these uh, three uh, pictures. So this is uh, Eocene methylene blue agar. This one is Mekanti agar, second one. The third one is Sabarot's dextrose agar. Somebody has given the answer in the chat box. Yeah, yeah uh, first, one first one answer is correct. Yes, it's E. coli on Eocene methylene blue agar. This is the selective media used for the identification or selection of isolation of E. coli and uh, um, it produces black colored colonies uh, in Eos in methylene blue agar. So the second picture is uh, about Mekanke agar. So this is a differential media which is exclusively used to differentiate lactose fermenting and non-lactose fermenting colonies. So uh, gram negative, most of the gram negative bacteria are, uh, have the capacity to ferment lactose so once when uh, once when you streak the organism in uh, mekan agar, if it is a lactose fermenting one, it will produce pink colored colonies in here. So the third one, uh, sabros dextrose agar, it is also one of the selective medium used for the identification of fungi. And uh, so uh, based on the morphology of specific fungi, you can get the colonies here in the petri plate. Thank you. Uh, that's all about my presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ravathi. <laughs> it was very fast. We felt like uh, some time trials for <laughs> this microbiology quiz. <laughs> um, we have a we have still like a minute. If anyone wants to ask any questions, we, we definitely have time for this. <laughs> if not, I think everyone should have the ability to unmute now. Uh, And uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, because most of them have given the uh, message in chat box like cool pictures 
thank you thanks thank you so much i hope you all like my session and uh, um, gave some fascination about microbes i'd like to introduce our next presenter his uh, name is gunter He's from Pavilion 35. I think he's been with the Bio Summit for almost every year in its existence, perhaps doing the same one. I, I wouldn't know. I was only at the last two. Um, I think it, he's interested in seeing this interface between art and life sciences. And uh, today he'll be sharing us uh, yeastograms. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to stop my share and I'll turn it over to you, Gunter. <clears throat> Hello, <clears throat> good evening, good morning, wherever you are. My name is Günther, I hope you see a little bit. Yeah, I was sharing this workshop. For, um, yeah, it's, I think it's my third time and it's the second time online. Unfortunately, usually I love to do it like uh, <clears throat> uh, offline that everybody can, can do the stuff. So we, what we try here is to make it a little bit hybrid. So um, you can still um work with me in the workshop and i just do some of the wetware and put it under the light so do you have an idea about what we are going to do this evening or uh, or this this morning wherever you are do you have like uh, some kind of uh, uh, an idea what we are going to do here oh so i, I can share i do here. but i saw i saw your description maybe you can explain quickly for everybody <laughs> Okay, yeah, <clears throat> I will share my screen shortly so I can show you with pictures. So what we are doing here, it's um, I'm showing you the histogram method. So it's a method, uh, it's uh, actually it resembles um, a carving, carving with UV light into a yeast culture. So we cultivate baker's yeast in a petri dish and then later um, put a stencil on the lid and put it under UV light and uh, the, the yeast cultures, they grow, uh, they, they grow um, along the, wherever there is shadow for them. Because as you know, UV light destroys the DNA and so the living cells and the remaining yeast uh, cells, they will form uh, a picture that uh, is like uh, according to the stencil we are going to create. And I'm going to show you here the whole method. I hope uh, we, we get, get along with the time. And what I can also offer, because it takes about like 12 to 24 hours, sometimes more, for the histograms to grow, that we make a debriefing in one of the next days. And also in one of the next weeks, because uh, the, uh, the, the cultures, of course, they change over time. At one time, so we, we try to, um, how do you say, impose a form on the yeast culture, but uh, go a little bit down so you can see my face. So we impose a form on the yeast culture, but at one point, um, other organisms, usually it's mold, <laughs> take over and they contribute to the creative result. So it's like a half human, and have microbe group effort to make beautiful pictures in the petri dish. So I shared short my screen that you just get like a, a brief. You also post it like a, the instructions online, so you can resemble it. And the, also in the debriefing later on, I will give you the all the information you might need to to sold the, the UV lights and some of the trade secrets <laughs> <coughs> also that can you know, improve the quality of the histograms. Let me see here. Ah, here, here we go. Okay, here, so we have like the, that's from our website. And here you can find the PDF, we go into that. Actually, the, what you can see here, th this was the very first histogram. So we tried out different UV lights and it didn't work. And uh, at one point you could see, oh my God, yeah, here, it worked. And from that on, we, we um, had to set up to even go further. So that was like the first <laughs> successful histogram. 
uh, and later on we could improve it. So we tried many different wavelengths of UV light and we, we found out of uh, 405 or 410 nanometer high power UV lights with optics, optics work the best. And here we got the whole recipe. I send you all the links later on in the in a email. I can also upload it to the workshop section if you want to do it. So just like briefly what we do, we will um, uh, cook some gross medium for, for, for yeast. Then we, uh, we, oh yeah, I forgot about these. Uh, then we uh, culture some baker's yeast. We apply it to the, to the um, culture medium. Then we are going to create some stencils that you can do together, or you can do it on your own uh, computer as you as you wish. And uh, we print it out, and we we're looking forward to to getting some results later on. Is it clear so far? Yeah, I follow. It's it's not that complicated. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I can show you, uh, share another. Usually, usually I, I use uh, the potato, where is it? Ah, it, it was still in, in here. It was just like uh, the potato dextrose agar. But I have still some peptone leaf left over, so I will use a, a different re recipe, but this recipe for the uh, uh, culture medium works just fine. It just like makes out of a, you use like uh, distilled water and you uh, also use like a, a potato infusion and then creating a gross medium. Yeah, let's just stop sharing so we get the camera view better. So what we are having here, so just like a small scale. And here we have some laboratory bottles. Um, but I just found out usually I use a different kind of pressure cooker. But uh, I think I lost the, uh, <clears throat> the valve. So Try this one. I hope this one works out. But uh, if that doesn't work out, we just cook it in a in a normal casserole. You know, like just like something like this. It's also possible to just like uh, make the gross medium in this because actually because uh, it's in the beginning it's not that sensitive to be that super sterile. Because you have the UV light anyway, and uh, the uh, the yeast, uh, the baker's yeast, uh, has a little bit of a of an advantage in the beginning, so it grows there anyway, super fast. So here are the laboratory models. Wait a second, maybe I can try it. Come closer with the computer, maybe you can. So, here you go, maybe you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, that's good. A question was asked in the chat, Gunther, who invented these histograms? Sorry? Who invented the, who invented the histograms? Yeah, me and the, me and the friend, but uh, I have to admit that the, I forgot his name. There was a scientist who did a similar thing with uh, bacteria, which I found out, and he was earlier, what he found out later then. But it was like, um, actually, it was uh, it was born out of, of a need 
because we had this uh, this project together with scientists and <clears throat> artists and there was a, like this one photographer and we uh, it was at the, at the time it was like in 2010 2011 when just like the iGEM just got off the ground and they had this biobrick kind of database and they, then they, they had the uh, Colorid, what's uh, Colorid, where they had the E. coli, uh, which they genetically modified uh, to make it light sensitive. Yeah, and we wanted to get the get our hands of them, but of course you, you need to join iGEM to, to get the parts. And all the our scientific partners, they were not so, how would you say, invested or enthusiastic <laughs> to, to really because you know in the database they also share like the, the small snippets of the DNA, so they were not so invested to, to really replicate it. And then we really thought of a different method. And there were a few yeast specialists, uh, and they said, Yeah, why, why don't you just grow yeast? And I see. Thank that's you. How we, how we came about. And we made it actually for a work because there, there was the like, but the photographer he didn't want to do it. There was a, a friend of mine and he, he needed something. I think for, for his diploma, I'll show you that, that, that later on too. And, um, and there was this idea because he was like a video crack and he wanted to make an animation. And then there was the idea just like to, to make an animation out of the mm -hmm. different kind of uh, histograms. I mean, we, we came up with the, with the name later. And then what he did, he built a Laterna Magica out of the... Uh, out of the uh, Instagram. I will show you that later because we have the, a lot of waiting time, you know, to cooking cool down anyway. And so there's enough room to show you more with the, of the context of it. Awesome. So, and if you have any questions or remarks, just, just go for it anytime. So I just use the small scale and uh, put in the eager. So it's 20 grams per liter. Um, what I recommend is to use organic, uh, organic uh, agar. It's not out of political reasons. It's just because it's it's really pure agar. Because usually in supermarkets you get stuff they call it agar, and it's made you know to make some kind of pudding or stuff. And it could be that there's some other stuff in it that makes it more convenient for cooks. But then it. Uh, you know that they uh, melt down at the lower temperature but then it could be that um, that if you use uv lights uh, it, there's a little bit uh, amount of heat is created and then it just like melts <laughs> under the uv light so that that happened one time and um, from that on we just use like the, the pure agar because that really works i think in the labs they use the pure pure agar as well you can also use if you have like get your hands on a LB agar, and you can use that too, of course. Okay, here we have like 200 milliliter bottles. One liter is 20 grams, so for one bottle. It's like divided through four, uh, five. So we have like um, four grams of agar um, per bottle, but you, you can also use a little bit more. I used a little bit more than in the recipe to make it a little bit more solid. So it uh, doesn't have to be uh, uh, it's not big enough, so you, you don't have to to save a lot of eager or be like efficient in the use. Oh my God, it went out again to start over. Here we go. You can also use a funnel.
Um, Maria is asking, is this the agar you're pouring into the containers right now? Is this is the agar right now. It's the agar. Which is like, usually get it in supermarkets, but uh, as I say, try, try to get the organic one because then it's pure agar and not some other stuff that makes it maybe more convenient uh, for the cooking. So it's the same with sugar, it's 20 grams sugar per uh, liter. So now I put in the sugar, four grams per bottle. Not really too much. So put in the sugar. So, uh, the same goes with peptone, just like using the leftovers, it's like 20 grams per liter, so it's also 4 grams of peptone per bottle. This is, by the way, soy peptone. I think there are different types of peptone. Actually, it's not that super sensitive which kind you use. Also, the cheese peptone is always possible. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> what else is, um, because uh, the yeast has its own color, it's like a cream, whitish kind of color, depends on, on the different, different brands, uh, but you need like to, to have a contrast uh, to the background you're growing it on. So yeast has its color and you try to make the background a, a certain kind of color. And you can use food color. For example, um, I usually uh, prefer the liquid food color. It's easier to do. And uh, for the black, we use uh, charcoal. It's, got, it's got in German, it's called active coal. Uh, what, what kind of colors do you want, guys? So we have like uh, 
we can mix it on later. So we have like green, yellow, red, blue, and black. Green, red, okay. Black. Come green. That's the problem. No idea. We have to cut it open. Or what? Yes. So we had like yellow. Yes. So, so we, we, we can try to mix it a little bit yellow and so orange. What was it again? Red? Will these colors degrade when it gets pressure cooked? No. Nope. Nope. They... So let's make a little bit the black one. Uh, with the active coal, you have to be a little bit careful because uh, active coal is hydrophobic and if you use too much, uh, the, the yeast cultures uh, have a hard time to stay on the, on the culture. Yeah, let's make, so we have green, red, so you want yellow to make an orange? Was it right? right? Let's check in the chat. Yellow, okay. So. And now we just, we have the sugar, we have the petone, we have the food color and the agar, and we just like fill it up with distilled water. Is it necessary to be distilled or can we just use tap water in this instance? <laughs> it depends on where, where you live, you know. Uh, I, would, I would recommend to use um, uh, distilled water because if you're sometimes in some areas, the tap water is like uh, full with chlorine, for example, or have other, other properties, some kind of minerals, and then it could like, or, or it doesn't work then just like sometimes so usually it's, it's better to i mean in the beginning it's always better to a little bit to stick with the protocol and then later on you get like more and more free you know as soon as right. you have like have a grip on it gotcha okay now like shake it well that it doesn't like sit on the the floor. And you could also use like uh, jars from marmalade, for example. If you don't have laboratory bottles, you could use jars from marmalade because they, they can they can handle the, the, the pressure and the heat very well. Oh, 
make sure that it doesn't clog. So, here for the Here for the pressure cooker, you can use tap water. Here it doesn't matter. And uh, before you before you um, heat the pressure cooker up, uh, don't forget to open the lid a little bit, because otherwise, you know, there will be the danger that the bottles explode because of the pressure. Here we go. So here we go. <coughs> we heat it up and just wait a bit. Glass. Here I will also already prepare the pita dishes. They have like a nine centimeter um, diameter because that fits under the UV lights we uh, prepared. I can show you the setup later. So we have uh, 12 UV lights. How many persons are we, by the way? Well, there, there are 20 people in the room right now. <laughs> so we can make uh, 12, 12 stencils. I don't need to make one. We'll let some of the other participants. Yeah, whoever wants. Um, so the, the, in principle, it's like, if you make a print with two colors, you know, like if you have like a old black and white newspaper, and uh, then you need to, to have like a depth in the picture, uh, you can use half tone patterns, like the like like the the images you used in a print in in um, old newspaper. So let me check. Uh, wait a second. 
I will show you some other examples we are doing. So you can use all kinds of images. Just looking for a folder. Uh -huh. uh, Sequoia asks, like, is there something else you can use instead of petri dishes? Ah, uh, yes, to you grow can. the yeast in. Yes, you can use anything, but you need like uh, you need like a transparent lid. So if you use like glass, you need a special kind of quartz uh, or what is silicon glass because uh, that the, the UV, UV light is not sucked up because it's like the UV light, it starts to, to kill the, the cultures with 360 nanometers. And usually if you have a, a normal glass, just like sucks it up. But with the polystyrol, that's why you use the, 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 the polystyrol is um, uh, do you think plastic wrap would work? Well, I can show you a graphic later. Sorry. Do you think plastic wrap would work as a covering? Yeah, it could could also work. And what we can also remember because look, uh, with the polystyrol, uh, you can use them many times for Easter grains. You know, because this is not a scientific scientific experiment where you need like have like really uncompromised data and you always have to use the fresh plastic ware because here you can really wash up because you just let grow baker's yeast and part of the concept the contamination is part of the concept anyway so you just like wash it out and reuse them so it's not not that sensitive so just like because usually if you use a lot of plastic ware uh, it doesn't feel that good if it's not like really necessary but we can, uh, I can show you a picture. I can also show you. We let it grow up. Ah, maybe I had it here. Uh, we once made, made these. Now it's, now we use it for dessert. But uh, these were made actually to grow histograms inside. And this, uh, this is porcelain, for example. And we just like put a, a, a plastic lid on it for the stencil to, to, to hold the stencil. Show me this. Oh, wait a second. That's because it was part of an exhibition. One second, I will share the screen. Well, it's a kind of uh, here we go. Can you see this? Okay, this is Ah, sorry, the pictures have to load. So these are the pictures. Sorry, it's not really optimized. Uh, here we can already see the, the beginning. Uh, so this was, uh, we had an exhibition and we also had like talks there and we had some social events and we also had some, some small DIY by experiments and we all uh, intertwined them on one floor in the exhibition space. And so the artist Christine Weisenberger, she created a lot of labware which could also be used um, to eat food. I mean, usually, <laughs> yes, not a lot of, uh, you, you have like strict separation of the labware so that you don't mix it up. But here we made uh, tons of these plates and dishes and cups to use it like for, for the social events. Uh, they were used uh, as parts of a sculpture and uh, they were also used in the, as, as labware, like uh, porcelain labware in the experiments. And here you can see already the plate. So here we have like the, the plastic, as you can see.
I'm sorry for loading the picture. Oh, yeah. Here you can see the, the sculptures that were made with the, with the dishes. And so during the exhibition, one could go there and just pick, pick the stuff out and use it for whatever purpose there was. And here you can also see there is also a small histogram inside. Maybe it's showing better. Ah, uh, yeah, here you can see histogram. Maybe wait a second. Uh, maybe it's. Ah, uh, where was I read it? Yeah, Gunter, please speak to the use of glass. Like, what types of glass don't let UV through? Is it all types of glass? There's some questions. It's normal, but uh, you know that the only glass that works, it's very, very expensive. It's like silicon glass you use in the lab. Uh, but uh, I will uh, I will look that up for you because in the debriefing I send you all the information about the right UV lights. Okay, yeah, it seems like there are those who are interested because maybe plastic, you know, it's like you discard it <laughs> afterwards. It's not yeah. as reusable. <laughs> yeah. Except for histograms, you can really reuse it. So we did this a lot of time in our old biohacking space, because as I told you, if you don't use it for very sensitive, if you don't have to measure for a scientific paper, and it's really important that you have like mm. the most, I would say, sterile conditions all the time, then you mm -hmm. can really use it. Here it's like a glowing marine bacteria. The, uh, photobacterium phosphoreum and here you can also see a little bit no whenever I try to to enlarge it I'm sorry for that I try Mm -hmm. you, you can see here so so we had like different use cases for for the porcelain ware here we go again so this was an ex exhibition space and so the, the social desk the art sculpture and the space for the talks and for the do it together experiments. We all try to, you know, uh, intertwine it. And here you can see a histogram. It, it's just like small lines. It was an abstract histogram. Here you see one again. Maybe here you can see better. So Gunter, Sarah Khan asks in the chat, um, She's interested in knowing like what what errors happen at the begin like beginners will make, right? And at the beginning of your process, what are some of the mistakes that happen that result in not so good histograms? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a hard one. I don't know because of, in the beginning, what was hard for us to find out the the right lights. I think that's very sensitive. Because we tried out many different wavelengths, we tried different, and for me, uh, only work the UV, uh, high power UV LEDs with 405 or 410 nanometers. So we even used UVC, which, which uh, is actually a harder UV light and even more deadly, but it didn't work with that. And uh, Sometimes I don't know if it, it, it could work, maybe that, but that's not nothing that, that's a fault because it's biology. Sometimes it just can happen that the yeast doesn't grow, but then you have like easily, you can see if, if nothing grows on there, then it's usually you have some, some kind of mistake or error or something went wrong with the culture medium, if nothing grows at all. So, and if the British grows all over, uh, with the yeast, but does but it's just like the yeast all over, but doesn't have like the stencil form, then something with the light is not right. 
So it's, that's the two things that can happen. Either it's uh, the yeast is not growing in, in the petri dish, or the, the light doesn't work because you know the, the UV light it loses power after after some time. So if you use them for for many many times, uh, they go strong. And and what you can what's also mystic is because oh my God, let's go. Uh, what also can happen is uh, because the, the LED lights, they also work as a resistor. And if, if it, because you have like a serious circuit and if one breaks, then the current gets so strong that the next one breaks and you have like a cascading effect of destroying all your LEDs. So usually I just put like three or four LEDs in, in one place. I think that that was like my biggest mistake once. I had like 15, 15 LEDs in one circuit and one broke. And then there were like 15 LEDs were just like in the course of a second, it was like the, and they were all gone, you know? And, and yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's the, the hardest mistake to I mean, this. So all the other mistakes are quite harmless, just doesn't grow or it grows too much. But I think that, that, that that's the hardest uh, mistake you can make, that you, you break the LEDs. You also have to be careful because usually when you have the clothes, you have like electrostatic fingers and you touch the LEDs, that could also be. So before you solder the LEDs, maybe touch some, some metal that to get rid of the electrostatic uh, current you have maybe in your head. So usually it takes half an hour. May I add something about you were saying if stuff doesn't, if your medium wasn't made right, then maybe stuff doesn't grow. <laughs> and then if, you know, um, if the light didn't reach the objects, then things will grow all over. Perhaps yeah. you could always run one where you don't expose one to light, <laughs> right? And hope you should see that one grow. And then in the other version, you would just remove the lid, have no covering and just all light. <laughs> just like a control style in science. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so let's see. I, I didn't look at the watch. Did, did anybody look in the watch when we put the, when we put the open on or? Did you check? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Ah, I, I can see. So usually, um, uh, it's 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 with a lot of pressure cookers. I just try to make it see. Uh, 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 uh. You can see here a little red. So when that's uh, flips out, so that's the security valve of the pressure cooker. When it pops out, and usually it's it's done. So that then was enough pressure in it because uh, in the pressure cooker, when the security valve pops out, then it's it's ready. So a little time. So just we just wait for that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I wanted to show you some examples of the stencils. Tanishka says it's about 15 minutes since you first put it in the uh, in the pressure cooker. Uh, for example, here is the, the one we just used, the abstract ones, and maybe there are some other ones. And Marco, I don't understand your question. You say, did you try to bioprint photo of interest? What photo of what? I'm not sure. Marco asked the question. He says, did, did you try to bioprint photo of interest? Uh, what, what the photo interest? Uh, what's that? I'm not sure. Marco, if you want to unmute yourself, maybe you can ask this question better than I can. But in the meantime, Sarah has a question, says that she has trouble with the vapors created in her Petri plates.
due to heat generated by the UV light. Have you had these types of experiences? And what do you do well, to get around? You usually have like condensed water. And yeah, yeah, you have to get rid of it. I mean, you, you cannot avoid it um, completely, but I try to clean the lids um, uh, before I put it uh, under, the, under the UV light. And what, what you can use? Uh, this we are not going to use it here. So usually we use like a camping gas cooker. Let's put it on the table and lit it up. And so we have around about like 30 to 50 centimeters. You have a sterile zone because like you have like here uh, hot air going up and the hot air will be sucked in again. And so it, it goes in a circle, you know, like the, you have like the circulation of a hot air. And then what you can do, I mean, if you have to be careful with plastic open fire fingers, that's not very a safe procedure. But just if, if you want to, to uh, you could clean it up and then just like hold it a little bit in the stream of the hot air and then you can make it sterile again. But we, we can go through, through a similar procedure later on when, when we uh, uh, apply the uh, culture on the culture medium. And now I will share my screen again, just show you some examples what we can do. Uh, for example, here we go. So this, this, this one was like, uh, these were the stencil we were, you were seeing like in the, we were using the exhibition, for example. And stop sterilizing. Here's the other one. So these are also these are also examples you could lose. So it, you know graphics, text work, and you can also use uh, photographs. But we have uh, to make. Uh, where do we go? We have to make. Stop share. Um, we have to make half tone patterns. So I, ca I can make you, I can uh, demonstrate you one example. And uh, we can either, you can either make uh, a stencil uh, on your computer and send me the file that I can print it out here, or we can do everything on my computer, right? Yeah, I think that's what she's thinking. Is there a format of a file that you want yep. people to PDF send? PDF would be nice. Or... A PDF. And the size? Uh, yes, uh, it's 8.5 centimeters. It's 8 centimeters diameter. Between 8 and 8.5 to make. I could show you. Let me make. Uh, Photo booth just to make a I make a portrait just to show you. Photo booth. Here we go. So if you make like a, if you make like a portrait, it's good if you have like if you have like a, a I say uh, would be nice to have like some kind of a white background. So oh, here we go. Picture. Sport. Can you explain what you're doing here? You took a picture of yourself and now and now what's happening? Myself and I'm sharing now then my screen. Uh, just wait a second. Open with affinity photo. Just a second, I'm sharing my screen. I don't know what's happening. 
but have to wait for the program to start. Uh, you can use any kind of <coughs> uh, photo imaging software. Uh, I use Affinity Photo. It, uh, you, you, you have to pay for it, but it costs. Uh, you can also use Photoshop if you like, or GIMP. Uh, uh, let me share my own screen. What I'm doing here. Ah, stop sharing that screen and share, share with this one. So Affinity Photo is just some kind of a, uh, like Photoshop, photo image manipulation software. Yeah, it's down a little bit. Here we go. Then what you make is you make it black and white because you only have two colors, right? You have the color of the background of the culture medium and you have the color of the yeast which usually is white or cream. So what you here do is like making a black and white. So for example here, then you like make some um, you, you have to make a little bit more contrast. So making the black more black and the white more white. Here we go. Ah, it's still working. So you, you make uh, more contrast with by uh, adjusting the, the the levels. I think it's called the same in Photoshop. But I send you the, the instructions to do that for all three imaging uh, programs I have, and then. We just, uh, uh, what you have to do, because, you know, uh, so you have, if you make like uh, uh, stencils of the face, you have to invert the picture so that everything that it's white in the picture is black and the other way around so that the, the face uh, correctly grows on the, on the culture medium. Second layer. But it can also uh, invert. So like you make it negative. So everything what is white here, everything what will be black will be white in the end because the yeast is white, right? That's why we, we invert it. And then we make, uh, uh, is it very easy to half tone pattern? Where do I have this? Uh, is it like Sorry. Ah, here we go, half tone. Uh, there's something not right. Why is it working? Let me put that down. Ah, because it's like on the. So here we go. So you see, this is a half tone pattern, and so that's how you get like depth into a black and white picture. Like the old black and white newspaper, I would say. That's just like the contrast. Sorry, I missed that. Is it some sort of filter? He, yeah, -tone? it's here it's a filter, half tone, it's different in Photoshop. 
In Photoshop, first you have to make a grayscale, then you have to make a bitmap, and in the bitmap function, you can make a half tone pattern, but it's also called half tone pattern. So, and the, the cell size, and here that, that, that's one of the secrets is the cell size of the contrast. Well, let's make it that way. And uh, here we go. That, that's a stencil I will print out later. I will export this and then put it. Sequoia is asking, why do we need the half tone pattern? Yeah, because you only have that you get like uh, the 3D effect of the pictures because you don't only have two, two colors. And with the half tone pattern, you, uh, you, you get the, the depth of the, of the image. I mean, you, you can also use, like I showed you before, just let me finish this. Uh, export. Uh, let me see what they want. EMG. Okay, make a new folder. Try some. Okay. So that's how we um let me share the screen again. Hmm. Something again. So here you can also use like lines or I would say planes. So it doesn't need to have a half complete uh, pattern. Just if you use like uh, real photos uh, from, from a camera or faces, um, it, you can use half tone pattern. I mean, you can also stylize it different ways in the, in the Photoshop. We can see, we can, we, we can make a, if you want, uh, I, I can, we, we can, uh, um, can make a, a different workshop in the course of the debriefing uh, how to use Photoshop or Affinity Photo or, or pictures like that. So let me check. Desktop or is on Instagram. Ah, didn't work. Now I can export it. So here we go. Share screen. So this is how it looks like. Um, so you can use, make an image like that, or you just like, can use like uh, work with typography. Like here. Or you can tell me. Did you get it? Gunter, Tanishka made a one and put it in the chat. Can you download and see <laughs> if this will work? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that works. 
So uh, it's either you can send me a picture of yourself or make, make a graphic or a text by yourself. Or if you have a, like a logo of your biohacker space or your company. Ah, Fungitopias. Let me check. Yes, that all the works very well. Okay. The morning looks good. There we go. Uh, 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 cool. Let me check what's the diameter of this. Does it say somewhere the size of it? Um, sorry, did you check the size? Let's see. Who's uh, imaging? Yes, yes, it worked. Yes, it worked. Yeah, right. And it's also a range. Move to the back. Are there more pictures to come? Sequoia so says she's doing one. If, if people are doing one, maybe write in the chat just so we know how many to expect. You said you can have 12. No, two, we have already two, so there can be 10 more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, Sequoia, you can also send me your your picture, and I can make the invert and. So you want me to make one with text and Komlos Veterina, right? As a Sequoia Fisher. Download. Yes, very good.
So this this is already really good with the black and white contrast, the picture of Sequoia. I can, if you want, I can share the screen. I think this is already good. I don't have to work with the contrast and in this program it's a filter. What's the astrophotography? It's new half tone. Well, let's make the cell size a little smaller. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the secret is to, to get the best results is that you find uh, the right size of the of the half tone patterns. So because you know, uh, uh, and and that's something uh, you need to develop some kind of uh, sensitivity, because uh, it's it's in two ways. It it depends on the um, on the concentration of the yeast solution, because if you use, for example. If the concentration is too high, that can had, uh, can also have a negative effect on the quality of the histograms. And so, so the secret is to have like the right um, concentration of the yeast solution and the right size of the half tone pattern. And if those two go, go together well, uh, the the picture gets more beautiful. And that's something it, it's very hard to to uh, quantify. Or I have to admit I never tried. <laughs> it's just like you do it uh, 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 a lot of times and then you, you get some kind of sensitivity for that. Um, I show you also, um, you showed the workshop one to an artist in Finland, Johanna Rotko, and she really mastered it. I show you pictures of her too, uh, of her histograms, and she really mastered the technique and it, she really makes beautiful portraits. I guess this is good. So, and now export. So. Ah, uh, we made a mistake. We didn't invert it. Just recognized. We can do this later on. Yeah. Yes, not late. Ah, uh, yes, very good. So let's go. Is everybody here? Um, I was gonna, I'm trying to do my own logo right now. It doesn't seem like there's many. I wanna give it a shot myself. Just like a second, I cannot go back to. I have no idea where's the. Ah, here we go. Sorry. So here we go again. Just lost control. Ah, the QR code. Oh, the 
QR code could be a little bit bigger. So the QR code is a little bit too small. Let's see how it works. So <clears throat> I see a lot of options in half tones. You can choose dots, you can choose lines. Yes, dots, lines. Is, uh, well, is one better than the other? I know it, ah, that's, that's it's the other code. Should I use both QR codes? Yeah, I can print it out. It doesn't matter. So let's see. I think this one is better because the other got a little bit more sharp. It's better now, thanks. So we have more. Could I overlook something? So the text, Homlos, Homlos, Veterina. So you just want to, want to have the text, right? I will share the screen so you can look at uh, some kind of font. Let's see. Uh, what, what kind of font do you want? Let's see. Which one should I choose? Marco seems to have no preference. Okay. I defer to you, Gunter. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, nice. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. Something like that. Let's the right size. Smaller, okay. Good. Yeah. Sorry, again. Can it go in two rows? Sorry? Can it go in two rows? Yes. You would like to have it in two? And you mean uh, like this? Like this? Yes, exactly. Yes. 
Okay, then let's make here maybe a little bit like oh, wait a second, this one. Let's make this a little bit more. And let's make them a little bit closer to each other. Where do I do this paragraph? Yes. But we can make it a little bit bigger to use more of the space. I have to get rid of this one and then for okay. Are you happy or you want to change it somehow? It's perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> So what else do we have? Valentina sent one to Ah, here. Ah, yeah, but King. So. Okay. Size. <clears throat> um, could you make the here for the biotech without borders? Okay, let me check. This is not optimal. Just a second. Could you just like? Uh, have it here a little bit uh, 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 a bigger, bigger half tone pixels. It would be nice. So that a little bit more light gets through. In the meantime, I, I put on a different one. Yes, I'm not sure if the half tone pepper is a little bit too fine here too, for the second one. I mean, the, the hands are good. But I, as, yeah, I mean, we can try it, or you can, can have the second one. Let me check. So just, I'm just checking for the, I can show you here. I can have you like check the temperature. So just so that you don't forget, when it's about 60 degrees, I will pour it into paper dishes. And we can do it again because we can mix up the colors as well if you wish. 
Yes, Valentina, I think he was speaking about yours with the hands. Uh, Makbul also would like a text one. <laughs> Is second or this one? Yeah. Second, then we can yes. Mm, I will share the screen so you can. Like if yes. like different kind of it's also um Is it cool or you want a different kind of, of uh, uh, type? Is this good? Could do this like. Let's see what it can do. <laughs> what I try to do. How to make it works in that program. I still need to
Uh, so usually there's a better way to do this. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> Is that okay? Or you want something else? So what else do we have? Okay. Yes, you can try this out. You can check the size and make it a little bit smaller. So Yes, the Biosummit logo, do you have it? And also the labs without border. You already sent that to me. Ah, oh, that's already. Ah, so the, the BWOP, the biotech. Danny, did you make a new one? Should you just try that? Is Danny here or is it he's gone? I think he's, he's crashed and he will come back. Let's see how many do we have. Yeah, we got two and so here we got already six. So we can have another four. So one is for Danny, so we can have uh, another three. Should we make the Biosummit logo? Does anybody have the, has the logo? Uh, in the meantime, we can start to pour in the the agar. Um, what you can do, uh, what we have to do is we have to fill the agar until like two or three millimeter under the under the edge here, because you know the the more distance between the the ceiling of the culture medium and the stencil is the picture gets distorted, right? So you have to try to make it as close as possible, but that uh, not the lid is sucked up by the uh, by the culture medium. And what we can do here? It's still a little bit hot.
can also use the black one. Also uh, mix the color. Just like here. Check. Uh, can you see this? Just was mixing the color. Does anybody has an uh, idea? Does it want just black, just red, or? Mix of any of the colors. Are there any any wishes? Oh, here's the logo. Uh, very good. Try this. There was one. one with yellow and red to make orange. Sorry, black and orange. Red and yellow for orange. Okay. It's almost it's almost orange, a bit red. Oh, wow. hot. Okay, we can yellow. There are uh, other special uh, gradients. Yeah, we can try. Gradients. I'm not sure if that works for gradients. Ah, uh, that, that's a uh, gradients, I'm not sure. Uh. I think I'm not able to make gradients. Red and green. Yeah, red and black, we have a few.
Voilà. Okay, that's it. So we cleaned up all the pizza dishes. And we just have to wait for it to get solid. Make the rest of the stencil and then I have to print it out. <clears throat> Yeah, very good. Maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, I mean, the last time we found out that Grace K might work. Sorry. You can try that out and I can also make the one just in, in case it doesn't work. I make a um, competitor out of the baby image. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, wait, it did work. What's the problem? There you go. So, 
The other one was the Lobo. Yeah, I'm not sure if the grayscales work that good. I will also just like making a uh, half tone pattern just to, to be sure. Uh, are we still in time or? How does it look like? Yes, I guess we're good. We have like an hour and a half, or yeah, we have about an hour left. We have an hour left. Yeah, the mm -hmm. two an hour of it. <clears throat> Uh, Danny, did you send me your logo again? Okay, I'll, I'll send just the on the raw one. <laughs> yeah, the program I was using didn't do the half tones. Crash my computer. <laughs> I can try to make it, yeah. I can try to make the half compete. That's not the right one, right? Ah, yes, it is. I should have inverted that. It's since I updated my, my computer, it's I had the same problems kind of. Always some sort of tech issue. <laughs> This is a bit. I don't know, hold things up. So if, if it's too much work, then just please continue. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm still, I'm not, not with your log, I'm still with the other one, but we still have an hour left. So it, yeah, we're in, just still in time. So it's not that. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's export this too. I'll take it too. Good. <coughs> so. Ah, here we go. Ah, there's BioArt CRN. Ah, here you go. Just close a few of the windows here. Oh, 
and he starts to breathe hard, just like when I have to walk upstairs. So let's check how we can make this adjustment layer in black and white. As it's there's green and blue in it. Yeah, let's let's put it this way. Let's try. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that works. It will be an experiment. <laughs> I love a good experiment. Yeah, I cannot 100% guarantee, but. It's, it's worth a try. So, uh, ah, I have to make a new one. So I'll take these off borders and there's the this one. Work too. Yes. So I guess is this all we have? Let's check the chat. Ah, detail green there's some more. Yes. Let's see. We can print those two out too anyway. Let's see. So let's see what we have. Okay, share my screen shortly to show you the results. So here we go, one PDF. And we have the other one. Also this one we try out. And then the third one. Where is this? Ah, it's already gone. Ah, it's, it's this. Yeah, the third one, which worked too. Um, what I do now is uh, I print it out. I have to prepare the printer in the other room. Just a second. I'll be right back. 
What I use is just like uh, using a transparent foil. You just print it out on, on, on transparent foil. I hope I get to the right side. Okay, see you in a second. So here we go. Usually, uh, <clears throat> I have to tell you uh, the, the quality uh, of a laser printer is much better than from an inkjet. So usually when, when you have the opportunity to print it with a laser printer, you get the better result. But yeah, that's what you just like found out. I think we have to let this dry out again and now we prepare a little bit, let's see. Already got solid. Prepare a yeast. Okay, I'm just looking if I have somewhere. No, I'm, I gave away all the Falcon cubes because the last workshop I was doing with kids and I just gave them all the stuff. Yeah, let's, let's do it here. Could you tip the uh, camera down a little so we can see the countertop? Yeah, is it better that way? Uh, maybe even more would be nice. Oh, yes. 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 Well, I'm just looking for... How do I measure? I could measure it by just to, that I don't get uh, the eye of the concentration. Because I'm used to the Falcon tubes, there is 0.4 uh, or that is a, a microliter in the Falcon tube. And I just have like, you know, have like in, in the head somehow. Do it this way. Okay, let's see. Just measuring. Okay. So here I got uh, I got uh, three times three times a Felton cube, just for me to, to get the right concentration. I just use like normal baker's yeast you get in the, in the supermarket. for one. So uh, I use uh, 0 0.30 grams for 120 milliliters. I think that's enough. Or could I use some more? I don't know. Now the trick is that you really dissolve the cold. It's really unfortunate that I don't have a factory tube because you just like shake it like that. Because um, 
uh, when you don't dissolve it properly, you get like uh, ugly spots with like high concentrated colonies, I would say. I think it just like put the whole thing back here again so we can see for I think it already got solid, yes. Yeah. I have here some isopropanol, just used to, to clean the drips ganzes bottle. Although we are already not that working that sterile as you can see. <laughs> Just have to make sure that's not full of alcohol later because then you would kill the yeast cultures. Just want to make sure that there's not some nasty bugs on it. And here. And yeah, just have a small pipette. Let's check if this is going to so. What I do now with the yeast solution, can you see it? What I do because we want to have like a, a German word is klein, as it's mean that, like, that you have overall the same, uh, that the whole um, surface is covered with the yeast solution, I just flood it. Like this. Just flood it a little bit and let it go. So I flood every plate. Some of the plates look like two tone to me. Is that just the trick of the camera or did something happen? Uh, what do you mean two tone? Like uh, like they have a light spot and a dark spot. I, uh, it's because I mix the colors. 
Oh, I missed it. The, uh, the tension of the surface sucks up the solution, but we clean up the the the, the needs anyway. I will make the, ah <laughs> because it's the same because we we fill it up with agar so much that uh, there's no any distortion. So all the plates are flooded. Right now, then use the Trigalski spatula and just massage it in a little bit of the yeast solution. Then after that, I just like pour it out and get rid of the rest with it with the pipette. So that you get it just touched the surface and you can see a bit, yeah, should have worked. And then here we take another paper and clean the inside of the lid. So it will be, it will be, uh, <coughs> let's say, uh, nuked with UV light anyway. But usually, so you, you can hold it upon a little bit open fire and just like make sure that you don't melt it in your fingers. First one ready, second one. And if that's not good here, so just like pour it out and get rid of the rest of the yeast solution. Uh, like Sarah mentioned, that's to um, minimize the amount of condensed water.
so Gunter, you mentioned that there's like some relationship between the concentration of the yeast and the half tone size. Yes. Um, what, like, what, what happens on the extremes, <laughs> right? Like, well, you just see, uh, because usually you, you get a resolution that's below a millimeter, maybe 0.7. 0.6, 0.7 millimeters resolution, like pixel size, you can, you can still um, uh, are able to produce. And then it's just like, um, I mean, so at one, uh, if you use a too high concentration, it doesn't work at all. Because then you can also see the dead cells. And if you already have dead cells, it doesn't, you know, even if you kill them, you can still see them. Then you have just too many dead cells and then you don't see any forms or then it's just all flooded with dead uh, yeast cells and then it you know you don't have any image you know hmm. oh I, I would tend to use it's, it's better maybe to use too little because then it maybe takes a little bit longer for them to grow that you just have like the the, the critical mass you need that you, that you really have a nice culture to grow I just to avoid that you have too many dead cells here. Yeah, yeah you, you can have just like some of the same effects like with bad photography. You have like, you know, just like n not very, uh, very clear edges. Or you can also, if you know, if you uh, tilt it, <laughs> Kind of, then it gets blurry as well. When you know when you move the when the lid is moved. So Yeah, I mean, this is how it looks when we just mix the, the colors. I think that's, that's what you meant before. So these are also artistic decisions you can make. You can just make it black or use one color or just mix the colors. Yeah, it's a nice effect to mix colors. <laughs> Gointer, I have a question. What is your family opinion about DIY lab in your house? Are they supportive or they are against it? Who? Your family. My family? I'm not sure if they think about that a lot. Oh, that's good. But my, it was like my, my, my family was supportive for every stupid idea I had. If it was not criminal or harmful then they really support it great <laughs> well uh, I, I was lucky that i could try out a lot you know i also studied for a long time i studied a lot of stuff and ended up in art school so that <laughs> that journey could have been over sooner than it than it was then in the end so i mean <sighs> My father hasn't to do anything with science at all, but uh, my mother or my mother's family, uh, she was a chemist, textile chemist. And so she was always supportive for those kind of things. So, and also my grandfather, he was actually the one who supported uh, two of my first projects because I didn't get any funding, but it was a different project where we translated digital 
data which limits into DNA. And he paid for the experiments. So that was, so I wrote them to my grandfather. Actually, yeah, he was very supportive with that actually. And also it was like, it was like really fun when I was a kid, like when we were like 12, uh, we could make our own gunpowder. And we just went to the pharmacy and bought calcium sulfate and sulfur. And they just, I mean, I'm not sure if this is possible anymore. That you get to the pharmacy and they, they, they give you the ingredients for, for gunpowder. It was like in the small village where I grew up. They, they, wasn't a big problem at the time, but I think that changed, I guess. Just to let you know, Gunther, you have 45 minutes left. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good in time. I think we're, this time we're a little bit earlier than last time. I think it was not so diligent than last time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're done earlier. <coughs> so do you make your living with Pavilion 35? No. No, no I'm, I make my living and all the teaching. I was teaching at art schools. Right now I'm teaching in Berlin. I'm teaching design theory at art school. I used to teach a theory for bio art and I was also giving, it was called open lab class. I can, I can show you some pictures. So we had a small lab at the university actually. So we, with Pavilion 35, we had like uh, three or four labs. It always changed locations because we, we didn't get any substantial funding. So everything came out of our pockets. And uh, uh, the last time with Angewandte, unfortunately, uh, they didn't uh, prolong the contract of my old boss, so that activity stopped there. So we called it open lab class, and it was really our own space. And uh, yeah, we could do a lot. I mean, it's in, in Austria, the laws are very strict, so we couldn't do genetic engineering there because you need special permits. So for genetic engineering, we always had to collaborate with a licensed, credited uh, lab. But we could do a lot, like uh, do working with mycelium, working, you know, the, the usual stuff, like SCOBY and mm -hmm. of work. And we also had the like a 3D printer, but unfortunately we had to, yeah, to clear that room. I think we, we can make it, I can show you some pictures. Otherwise, if you don't have time today, I can show you in the, I can show you everything in the debriefing. So we have like, So here we go, let's see. Oh. So yeah, I hope the Transparent film dried up. We can cut it out. Here we go. some some tape.
Yeah. Yeah, good. So here we go. Just like cut it out. So the fungi topias, what kind of color do you want? So we have red and black, green and black, black and orange, orange, green, red, green, red, yellow, orange, red and black. Was that Valentina? Fungitopia. All works, she says. Okay. Sure. Put it bits on the I think we made it a little bit too big. So what I do now is I just like use some some tape here. You can see here better. And it's just like cut down small stripes. And just to fix it on the lid. So first I'm ready to put under the light, yeah. Uh, it just occurred to me, do you want people to put their like emails down somewhere so that you can contact them afterwards with the information and the pictures of the Great, because Instagram? I will make uh, pictures of it every day or every other day. And it just that I can send you the results. So you can see slowly the development of the yeah, artwork. There's all the, <clears throat> once I was in, in Tokyo and they had a printer that could print directly on the lid of the Petri dish. <laughs> so the technology exists. <laughs> so you don't. Yes, I make a I made a Google Doc in the participant shared drive. So if you put your email in there, then Grinch will have it to share this uh, growth of the Instagrams with you. Yeah. I should put my email address in there, or, or did you talk to, to? Yeah, I can I can put your email address in there as well at the top. Yeah. Uh, Gunter, was that on a, a black and red petri dish? Sorry. Was that on a black and red petri dish? This is on a, on a black and green petri dish. You want it on a different color? You want um, it on I'd like it on the black and red one, if, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. 
There you go. Yes, amazing. <laughs> If, if we should um, label the dishes with numbers so we can say who, whose email belongs to which dish. Yeah, I, I email all, all to all anyway, so I make like eight files. Did anyone ask, what is the QR code to <laughs> send people to? <laughs> I wonder if, uh, if it will be readable. Still be readable as yeast. It gets a little bit fuzzy. I hope it's not too big. I made a mistake. Because I should have put it, you know, in a should have made a, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't think about it. You know, to make the difference between the square and the circle. <laughs> Basic geometry. <laughs> we'll still make a nice pattern, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, let's see. <laughs> Uh, 
Gleitner, herzliche Danke. Sorry. Herzliche Danke. Gern geschehen. Bitte schön. <lacht> Sorry, do you hear that? So, almost done. I'm not sure if you already said this, but uh, is it important that you poured the plate so full with the agar right up to the top? Yes because uh, the picture get distorted, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bigger the distance is, 
Maybe I show you. I, I, show, I can show you again on the very first histograms we are making. There you can see a little bit the effect it has. So, so now we, you know, put the stencil on, on, on the lids everywhere. We can now show you this. Uh, we put it. So, let's put it. So, we have the. Can you see that? We have the UV lights here. With some, some electricity. So superficially, they seem to work. Let's hope for the best. Oh. No. I just put like the things under the light. Maybe I use both hands, I'm sorry. Yes. So here we go. Just like put it on. Oh, that's it. So let's wait. So the insides of those tubes are painted? Uh, I just put black color, but I'm not okay. sure if that is really necessary. Let's fill it up. Yeah, it's a second. What wait a second? Here I want to show you of the distortion I was talking about four. Okay. 
Maybe, can you see it here a little bit? The two, how it gets uh, here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thickness changed <laughs> along the, the course of that. So that, that comes from the distortion when you, when the distance between the surface of the medium and the stencil is, is bigger. And we get this kind of distortions, yes. Ah, and I can show you. Let me check this. I can show you uh, Johanna Rotko's work quickly because we have a few minutes left, I guess. Yes, we have about 10 minutes left. Very good. And afterwards, maybe we can all take a picture together, <laughs> just like with our Zooms. <laughs> okay, I just have to share again. So here you can see that's the Instagram account of Johanna Rotko. She's a photographer and artist from Finland and she works extensively with Instagrams. And here you can see, you know, how, how clear and especially this one, you know, look at this one. See, and this is really like, you have like the perfect combination of, um, uh, of the half tone pattern and the, the e solution. Let's see. I mean, I once tried it out, I and mean, we were just showing you before. Wait a second, but it, I never went there all the way. Uh, let's, just a second. Here we go. Just a second. So you can see here. It's also just it was just like on the side making attempt to make because we were had, had the histograms running already. Just make histograms with the photobacterium phosphorium. But I think you have to to. Uh, that, that needs some more development, as you can see, because the UV light and the heat, because uh, <clears throat> to really uh, grow beautifully, I think they need more love. I mean, it worked in that case because it was like the third floor underground. So it was extremely cold and humid there. And uh, that already helped if you have like a deep cellar and you want to try histograms with like marine glowing bacteria, then it should be some, some cold place. Yeah, that's it for today. We wait, let me check, everything is good. So we wait until tomorrow or the day after tomorrow to see the results and I let you know. And of course I have all the email addresses and I send you, additional information so that basic and try it on your own. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gunter. I'm just gonna redrop the link if people didn't get their email addresses in there. And I tagged you there. That's awesome. In three hours we can make Instagrams. <laughs> um I would say let's take a photo of everybody together on the Zoom. So let's stop this.
Uh, Shane, can you stop the spotlight? Maybe. And then switch to gallery view. Okay, I got it. Gallery view. All right, I'm going to take a screenshot of my screen. So if everyone can turn on their Zoom cameras and find something in your immediate area that might be biological of some sort. I bring that closer. Maybe like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Did it work? Uh, yes. Let me save that picture. I'm going to do one more for us. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Second try. <laughs> okay. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for everyone sticking around. We have 15 minutes, so feel free to chat amongst yourselves or uh, the next session will start at 4.45. <laughs> so we still have some, some time to go. Yeah, if you guys want to talk more about Instagrams or whatever you like, uh, yeah, the room will remain open and yeah. <clears throat> hopefully we'll just have the presenter come in and we may have to chat a little bit about logistics, but it should be fine. Let's check if I can show you some pictures of the open lab class. Just like because we were talking about it before. Ah, right, here we go. You can see our old lab. So these are like slime molds. And here, that was a collaboration. It's, it's called uh, Open Lab, but it's uh, educational lab by the, uh, by the Ministry of uh, Education in Austria. Because like in the 90s, I mean, it, it, I mean it, it, the whole thing is a long story. So in Germany, Switzerland and Austria, we have this uh, esoteric tradition of homeopathy. You ever heard of it? It's like globally, Bachblüten, ever heard of that? It's no, I've never heard it. Yes, non, yes. And it's absolutely non-scientific, non you know. But it has a, a big influence um, on, on the health system because like a lot of people believe in that. You know, you just like take the small pills that have absolutely no scientific um, how we say grounding or, the, or, or effect and people taking it for all kinds of, uh, <clears throat> of illnesses. And that also, and um, what we didn't know, it started out like maybe in the last century, like in the 20s. Uh, the guy is called Rudolf Steiner. He was an uh, anthroposoph. That, that, that's the kind of philosophy they're using. They also build schools and stuff like that. And uh, for them, you know, illnesses all had a reason and was mixed up with, I think, a little bit with psychology. And that's also the reason why Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, they're not, we have so many anti waxers That's why, just like this, this weekend, the situation here got totally uh, out of control because they leave, believe in this uh, uh, esoteric uh, health stuff, you know. And that's all, also a reason why people, um, uh, a lot of people in Austria, Germany, are hostile to biotechnology, you know. They don't see the benefits um, in it, and they're very hostile if you have somewhere a small field with like GMO corn, like 10 square meters, people totally freak out and they go there and wipe out the plants. And that's why they founded this lab to, because then there was like these big tabloid newspapers that make really like uh, anti uh, anti-biotechnology campaigns like the biggest tabloid newspapers which have like almost like you reach out for the like 40 percent or 50 percent of, of the austrians and so they, they had to found this lab to 
to educate the people because they were using like arguments like you know like really esoteric crazy arguments you, you couldn't imagine and that's why they founded this lab but they are also doing that anybody anyone can go there and do genetic experiment you can check if you're a night person if you're a broccoli person and they have a lot of well, like fun experience and so I went there with, with often to, to make the genetic engineer experiment so we can make own bacteria and all kinds of because we, we could we weren't uh, uh, allowed to do this in, in our DIY bio and so th these are some pictures we went with the students in in that lab and here we were like soldering the histogram the histogram uh, UV lights Glowing bacteria, and we were also at Ars Electronica making the glowing plants projects with Andrea Stürmer, you might know. And this is, yeah, like the glowing plants. And, and this was actually our, our old lab at the university. So this were our DOI bio lab, and you, you can see we did a lot of um, uh, fungi. In the end, we were uh, pretty sophisticated to grow mushrooms so we could clone them and we really had like some crazy you know like the, the lignosum like the, the wood mushrooms that we, 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 we really had to grow a lot of these mushrooms somewhere the picture uh, I think. For another, ah, Ah, here we go. For example. I'm sharing a new one. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah, and we were able, to, we had a little laminar flow there. And yeah, here we go. Ignosum rhinoceros. That's really nice mushroom. And this is, was our 3D uh, bioprinter. Oh, this is actually Mary Magic, maybe one of you MIT fellows. She's, she lives now in Vienna. And you could also have like this wooden nails here. You could like uh, um, inoculate the mushroom, the wooden nails, and then you can put it in all kinds of wooden structures, and then the mushrooms grow out. Yeah, you know, the usual mycelium kind of thing. Yeah, actually, this, this was our university DIY bio lab. Yeah, that's like really learning how to clone mushrooms, grow them from the spores, and actually, our, our fungal experiments were quite sophisticated in the course of. You know, making those, I don't know how it's called, sponge bags. Mycelium bricks, bricks? Yeah, we could make, you know, first, you know, you, you grow it in the petri dish, then you grow it mm -hmm. in a bag with rye, and then you can put it in a bag with, um, I would say, wooden. 
I did not want. More okay. ah, this was like his Roland when Dean Long he's also at the bio summit. We did some micro, it's also the, the lab, and we made this um chrono photography. With microscope. Yeah, that was our lab. Yeah, you know, it's kind of enough our centers. Oh, I uh, see Larissa joined. Uh, you're the next, you are one of the next presenters, correct? And we're just waiting for your partner, Yuning. Yes. Okay, right. excellent. Yeah, we're just in the meantime, Gunter's just showing us some pictures of things. So. Um, our nearby bio lab, yeah. This was like the, the how do you say, the lemon mushrooms. <laughs> and I don't know, so, you know, Corona photography. I'm not sure if you have like a video here. No, microscopes. To track the movement of the wall. Ah, here you can see you see those lines. Always just take a picture of the thing that is moving, and then you can see no uh, no board with the technique, like my bridge or the picture of that. Hey, you can have all kinds of fun. I'm not sure if you can see it in here, like moving, moving small water beers or water pairs or whatever. That is. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. that's awesome. <laughs> Let's Larissa prepare and uh, just uh, things. And I see you in the conference. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Thank you very much. This uh, workshop is called Eco Linguistics and Multi Species Worlding. Uh, it's being run by Yuning Chen from the Royal Col College of Art uh, the, in the UK and the Biomimicry Innovation Lab. Um, she's a designer and a researcher. Um, and yeah, <laughs> the other person that is joining us is Dr. Larissa Peshez uh, from the University of Edinburgh in the UK. And I'll let them introduce themselves a little bit more and share with us what this workshop is going to be all about. Uh, so over to you guys. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Can everyone see my screen now? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, hi everyone. Uh, we're hosting this wacky workshop called Eco Linguistics and Multi Species Worlding. Um, this workshop is hosted by me and Dr. Larissa. Um, the link attached uh, is already inside the chat. So you guys can see my screen as well as enter the mural board directly. So in the following time, uh, workshop time, we're gonna use this board as presentation platform as well as collaborative platform. Um, so a little bit of background uh, of this workshop. 
Um, as more and more living systems are incorporated into materials, products, and services, I have been wondering how do we better collaborate with them to solve problems without compromising their rights, or how do we define and empathize with their states and well-being? Um, and as we all know, we are entering this era of metaverse, whereas everything can be digitized and stimulated online that augments and connects our sensations to things around the world. Although right now, uh, visual and audio mainly construct a sensorial experience in the digital world, soon haptic, taste, and even smell can be augmented um, within the digital reality. Yet they are basically designed um, from the perspectives of humans with the ability to edit and augment our sensations. What if we can borrow another species' sensibilities to experience the world um, from a different perspective? So this workshop uh, is a step into mediating perspective changes and empathy between humans and non-human in a playful and creative way. Um, the outcome of this workshop will become the early scripts uh, of new multi-species XR design um, for my further project. So a little bit of introduction um, about ourselves. Um, I, I recently graduated from Royal College of Art uh, and Imperial College. So I'm working as a designer and researcher at Biomimicry and Innovation Lab. Um, I've been highly interested in multi-species interaction design. And one of my final projects here uh, is about designing a plant reality set that take people into the perception of plants at, uh, via a set of multi-sensory um, AR gadgets. And I'll let Larissa introduce herself and her work. Hi everyone, um, I'm, I'm a lecturer based at the University of Edinburgh, so Uni and I are both in the UK, she's right down south and I'm right down, right up north. Um, and uh, I've been working in biodesign for perhaps five, six years now, and I've uh, been running a course on biodesign and have a few research projects around that. Um, yeah, and now working with uni in, in different um, projects. So um, yeah, that's basically my background. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a step-by-step -step guide um, to construct our alternative species realities. So first I categorize the building blocks uh, into four types. The first one is about ecological networks, uh, which directs our attention to look at the the ecological relations uh, from the species point of view, uh, which species are in a symbiotic or competitive relationship with them or who are their predators and prey. Um, this can determine the characters uh, within the reality that we are designing. Um, and the second one's uh, about sens sensation modalities, um, such as like sight, acoustic, and touch. And the third one is about time. As we all know, different species lives on various timelines. For example, we have different lifespan and different speed of time perception. Plant and turtle are known to have like way longer lifespan than us. And if we are to look at the motions in time from their perspectives, everything might seem way faster in relation to their own speed. And the final one is about space. The setting of a space is one of the most basic elements of reality design. It defines how space and viewpoint can unfold and change. Here we can think about the scale of the species, the shape of their trajectories, uh, or the way they move. And that's all the briefing part. Um, onto sorry, <laughs> the actual uh, toolkit um, that we are going to use today. So here are um, a bunch of cars describing the parameters that's going to help you to construct a multi-species reality. Um, at the end of the session, um, you can sketch out an idea about uh, the reality setting um, from your inspirational species of point of view. Um, you can use picture collage or pencil drawing and upload them uh, on the board. And you can also write scripts to describe the experience to the audience and walk us through your reality uh, during the sharing session. Um, among all the parameters, um, the first four, uh, species, uh, space, time, eco network, are basic settings that you need to find out to construct the foundation of the reality. And you can choose the species on the right-hand side um, here um, on the portals. And secondly, you can pick two to three sensation parameters to further shape the experience uh, in your reality. And you can find some prompts written here to help you translate in the information uh, into your reality design. So to give a simple, a simple example, um, here, I started with the uh, snake's reality. So I'm 
design the shape of this space um, based on the way a snake moves. Typically, they have a very low perspective as they crawl through the ground, but occasionally they can stand on their body. So I shape the space uh, based on their moving trajectory and topology of their body plan. And for example, in terms of their sight, the way they see is very different from us. They can only see green and blue light uh, during daytime uh, and grayscale during nighttime. So that determines the color uh, of the whole space reality setting. Um, you can check out the rest of the parameters uh, as a reference to kickstart. So all of you will be working in groups of two to three people and use roughly 15 to 20 minutes to find out how your target species uh, perceive the world in terms of the parameter you've chosen. So um, when you have a teammate uh, in your breakout room, uh, you can just decide on a species and take one of them uh, to the following canvas uh, and put your name on the canvas to make sure uh, no, one's, no one else is using your board. Uh, and the overall timeline of this uh, workshop would be 35 minutes uh, for um, finding information of your target species and brainstorming about the reality uh, and 25 minutes for sharing, uh, collectively sharing different realities um, and then five minutes for Q&A afterwards. So, so just to add yeah. quickly, Yuning, um, so we selected these 12 species, um, which you can choose one of them to start designing this new reality. Um, but of course, if you're familiar with another species or your work is related to a particular species that's not listed there, feel free to um, take on the hat of this, um, of this, this species you are, you are familiar with.